Hi there, I hope you're doing well today. My name is Chantal and if you're new here, 2024 is the year that I'm starting bullet journaling. We've got the notebook, let's plan the February setup. This month's theme is afternoon tea, so grab yourself a cuppa and let's create some art. I can't believe we're already on the second monthly setup of the year. It's so exciting having a new little project. In case you missed any of the previous setups, we did the 2024 spread together and we also did the January monthly setup. I will leave the playlist down below in case you missed it. This one is going to be a little bit different. Each month will have a different theme, it will have a different colour palette, but I'm also trying lots of different mediums. For the 2024 setup, we used watercolour and that was a little bit of a fail. The paper was very warped, I think it looked a lot worse in real life than it did in camera, but that one didn't really go to plan. For the January setup, I used my Future Colour brush markers. Unfortunately, I only have one water-based marker, so I tried to use these brush markers, they didn't go through the page. I don't know what they're made of, but they're very bright. And they were very fun to use, very bold, I will probably use them again. But what I wanted to do for this month was go back to my roots a little bit. And if you don't know me, I am a paint gal, I love to use paint. The watercolour didn't really work and I knew that for this month I wanted to try gouache. So for today's setup we're going to be trying to use gouache. Welcome back to the new series, grab yourself a cuppa, relax and we're just gonna have a little chat whilst creating the setup. The theme for February is afternoon tea and I actually came up with this because I thought of pancake day and I wanted to do pancake day and pancakes as the theme but I could not find anything that fit that really specific theme. I had a quick look online and there were no collage papers, stickers, anything like that. I don't have any washi that has food on it and so I had to open myself up a little bit to a slightly different theme. I found some stickers online that were part of like a tea set and they did have pancakes in them. You might have seen that set in the haul that I uploaded on Thursday, I will leave it down below if you haven't. The sticker set is adorable and that really inspired this theme. It has two pancakes in it, it has some cupcakes and lots of really cute mugs of tea and coffee, some modern, some vintage and so I thought of the afternoon tea just inspired by those stickers really because they are adorable. The colour palette is going to be very different to the previous one. For January we used really bright blues and for this one with the theme being afternoon tea and the colours that the stickers were I was thinking something like yellows, pinks, really peach pastel tones. Not super light but quite muted. And today we're using jelly gouache. I do actually have some acrylic gouache now. I got some for my birthday, I got some birthday presents and I got a birthday gift card. So there will be a birthday haul coming up in the future, I've already filmed it. But I've not actually used the acrylic gouache yet. I did some swatches but I've not actually used them and I thought it would be a little bit bold to try them for the first time in this spread. So hopefully in a few months time I'll feel a bit more comfortable and we can use acrylic gouache in a setup. But for now I'm sticking to my jellies. I do also have a dry gouache palette which uses gouache from the tubes and I add water and re-wet it. I decided to not use that palette because I felt like it would have quite a high water content because you're kind of treating the gouache like watercolour, wetting it, reactivating it. And the first spread that I did really did warp. The pages are so bumpy that I was trying to avoid that. So I feel like the jelly gouache has a little bit less water in it. The only problem with using regular gouache, which I wasn't a huge fan of this idea, is just because it can reactivate really easily. I've used gouache in sketchbooks before and if you accidentally spill water on the page, it will go everywhere. So that is a slight concern because the bullet journal is ideally going to be used daily. So the chances of spilling something on the page is a lot higher than something like a sketchbook you don't use as often. And that's where I think the acrylic gouache will be better, or at least better suited for bullet journaling. Nevertheless, I really enjoyed using gouache. It was really fun to create a bullet journal setup and use something that I'm kind of comfortable with. I was actually less comfortable using the pens and the brush markers because I'm just so used to using paint. One thing that I did struggle with using a paintbrush was to try and get smooth lines. 
A lot of the lines are very wonky, they do have slight mistakes. And sometimes the paintbrush was difficult to write with, sometimes it just, I mean it's a paintbrush, it's not really designed to write with. I found that difficult. And because it's gouache, sometimes you'd be on a roll and then the paintbrush would be dry. So it wasn't a very forgiving medium to use in my palette journal. But I've got to say, I think it was worth it. I think the outcome is such a beautiful spread. I'm really happy with the colors I created. I love the gouaches matte. And I love that I got to try painting in the journal. And the pages didn't warp very much. Compared to the watercolour, they pretty much haven't warped at all, which is really good because I was quite concerned when I did my first spread and watercolour was kind of unusable. It did concern me because the journals were not cheap and I was really hoping I would be able to use watercolour in it. I've seen so many other people be able to use watercolour in their journals, so maybe I will give that another try in the future. I feel like if I use more pigment and less water, maybe that will be better because the gouache did work, the gouache didn't warp. So maybe if I use watercolour in future, I'll do like really bright washes, try not to do a second layer. And I do now have a buff titanium that you might have seen in my most recent art vlog, which I haven't actually used yet. I'm really excited to use that. So if I want to create some pastel tones, I could always add a little bit of buff titanium rather than adding water, which is what I usually do. I'm not used to using a white with watercolour, to be honest. I feel like some people do and some people don't, and I'm one of those that doesn't. I prefer using transparent or semi-transparent pigments. And if I want to go for something opaque, I tend to go for gouache. But I'm pushing myself out there. I've got myself a buff titanium, so I'm going to try and add some white to my mixtures and I'm also thinking of making another colour chart for my watercolour palette because I would like to see what my colours will look like with a white mixed in. I just can't visualise it. The buff titanium is like a cream off white and I can't really visualise what the colours would look like with it mixed in because I've not really used the paint yet but I have popped it in my palette. So yeah, I think I might do a colour chart. Maybe we'll do that together in a future art vlog. I would like to make a very pastel neutral themed setup. So hopefully that's something that I'll be able to sort out. If not, gouache can make some really lovely pastel and neutral tones. Like you can kind of see here, we've got some interesting neutral tones. I just love those unique shades. And you can tell that when I'm picking up the Posca paint marker to do the writing, they just don't have that, or at least I don't have that because I just got like the starter set. The yellow is very bright and it almost doesn't match the theme, the same with the pink. But I was trying to use a paintbrush and I don't think I would have been able to write down any of the smaller words or numbers with a paintbrush. I mean I probably could have switched to a smaller one. But I do tend to keep my watercolour brushes separate from my gouache ones just because I don't want to accidentally get any gouache in my watercolour palette and then it won't be transparent. So I know I did say last time that I was going to use a ruler for the lines but I just didn't see that working with a paintbrush. I kind of felt like if I tried to use a ruler with a paintbrush and then accidentally moved the ruler, it would just smear everywhere. I did make a few mistakes, definitely a few more than I did last time. The mistakes I made this time were mostly my hand going in the gouache. I'm always a little bit hesitant to use a hairdryer when it comes to gouache because it can crack. And I think because it's winter time and it's so cold, the paint stayed wet for so long. I'm used to 100% cotton paper and this is literally a notebook so I didn't think it would stay wet at all. So quite a few times my hand went into the paint and then just smeared it across the page and I had to somehow try and remove the paint which didn't really work. So you can see a couple of weird patches and that's what they're about. Gouache definitely came with its challenges but I do really love the outcome. For this monthly setup I decided to stick with the same habits as previous and again I've popped it with the calendar. One thing I focused on a little bit more for this monthly setup is to make the spreads cute. But the one problem with making the spreads cute is that each of my boxes have less space for writing. 
I do want my bullet journal to be usable. I would like it to have enough space in it for me to use it well. And there may not be room if I'm making the boxes so small because there's decoration around the outside. That is a slight concern. Finding the balance between making the setups cute and aesthetic and something that might look good on YouTube like we are now and creating something that actually is going to serve its purpose. But I will admit there are some days where there's really not very much at all to write in each of the boxes so I might just have to learn to write a little bit smaller. Since January is almost over let's talk about how my first ever month bullet journaling went. I think one of the first problems that I've encountered is that in the key it says that I'm gonna make big boxes that connect the dots. Unfortunately by creating the boxes in this way it means that I need to leave a line in between each of the boxes so that they don't join up and create a grid. I don't know if that makes any sense. If I'm having to leave a line every single time between the boxes, I really do not have much space in my boxes. Especially with my future monthly spreads being cuter and being smaller, that's something that really needs to change. So whilst the key says that we're going to do lovely boxes that connect all of the dots, we're going to have to do it smaller, we're going to have to do a box in a box. Or the other option is to do the regular size boxes and just be okay with it looking a little bit like a grid if you have multiple underneath each other. I don't know, but I think I'm going to have to compress what I'd like to write a little bit more. Another issue that I've kind of noticed, which is a really good issue to have, don't get me wrong, is that I have too many ideas on the brain dump page and I basically filled up the entire page in like the second week like the start of the second week. I do think this links to my previous point in that I was leaving a gap in between each line, which is something that I won't be doing for the February spread. But if it ends up being a regular problem, I might need to do an extra page or two for the brain dump or ideas. I do have space in this journal. I've done the math. I kind of worked out. I think it's like 6.6 .6 spreads I can do per month. And I'm currently on about five, so I do have the space to be able to do that kind of thing. At the current rate that I'm using up my pages, I think I'm gonna have quite a few blank pages towards the end of the year. I should really be doing a little bit more per month if I'm planning to finish the journal like every page by the end of the year. Whilst I am struggling to think of ideas to fill that extra spread each month, I think the main reason that this is a problem is because I'm doing two weeks on each spread in my weeklies. I have seen people do Dutch doors or do one week per spread, but I think I just have that strong feeling inside of me that I don't want to waste pages. I do the same thing with paint, with paper, with collage materials. If you've seen any of my art vlogs, you'll know that behind the scenes, if I have any paint left over, I will just fill lots and lots of pages in my sketchbook and that's a future problem. We'll do something with it. I just don't like wasting products. So whilst I know that at some point I will probably need to cut the paper and create a Dutch door and just give that a try, it does feel like a little bit of a waste for me because that's just kind of who I am. I don't like wasting materials, especially considering the paper was not cheap. I'm sure I'll find a way to use it, but the idea of cutting that paper just for aesthetics kind of pains me. As far as the February setup goes though, this is definitely my favourite so far, including the 2024 one. This is my favourite so far. We're only on the third one, but I feel like this gives us a lot of potential going forward. I love the colour theme. I really love the colour theme. I love the details, the washi tape, I think it's such a cohesive theme. I think looking forward into March, we're probably going to go back to collaging because I did feel like I really missed it on this one. Collaging and sticking things in is really fun and I think I'll probably do it on alternate months. Because this theme is full of pinks, it's kind of bright but also sort of pastel, I can't describe it. I think the next theme is going to be dark. And I would give gouache another try again. I think that just works best for me. I'm a painter, I feel quite natural with paint. With the markers, I was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but that is something that I do want to return to. I do want to still push myself. So far, the gouache hasn't caused me too many problems though, other than my hand smudging it. The theme for March is going to be Easter. That will be coming at some point next month. So please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss that one because I have no clue when that's going to go up. 
I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I am still very new to bullet journaling, so I'm currently just experimenting as I go, trying different mediums, seeing what works, what doesn't, what I enjoy, and just bringing you along for the journey. I hope this might have been relaxing for you, maybe it's given you some ideas. Because I do do a lot of random stuff in my journals and my sketchbooks. I just kind of mishmash things together and hope it works. Thank you so much for watching, for being here, listening to me ramble. I really appreciate it. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like and let me know down below which is your favourite page. I think mine is the monthly calendar page. I really love how that one turned out, but I do also love the cover page. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on Thursday with a new video. Bye bye.